We looked briefly at Swiss darning or duplicate stitching when we were fixing motifs where we had missed stitches, but it is also a technique in its own right, and it is very useful where you don't want to have to set up for either a small piece of stranded colour work and tarish in the middle of a work, or you want to just add a motif to something actually that you've already knit. So in this case I'm going to add a small panel. The first thing I do when I'm doing this is I mark out where I want to put the motif using a piece of waste yarn so that I'm not continually trying to make sure that it's centered. So I do a little box around the area that I'm going to do um, using this yarn to kind of do a little kind of a running stitch or just a tacking stitch because I'm going to take this out afterwards. So I work out where my stitches are going to go and then I place my tacking yarn all the way around that. Once I've put in the box, I am now ready to start my motif. So I find the first stitch that I'm going to go into and I go in underneath the bottom of the V of the stitch that I want to overstitch or duplicate stitch or Swiss darn. <laughs> um, and this is where it's easy to go wrong because it's tempting to actually try to go in and out over the actual piece of the stitch. But what you're doing is you're going in underneath the stitch and then you're going into the two legs of the stitch at, on top of the stitch that you're stitching over. And that's what gives you that really good coverage. So you're actually following the line of the stitch as if you were um, darning over it, essentially. So now I'm going to go back in. Something to be careful of here is that you don't split the stitch. And the reason I say that is because you will, it's useful to be able to kind of manipulate the stitches. And if you split them, it can be harder to do that. So if I want to tighten this up later on, I want to make sure that my red yarn hasn't split my red yarn at any point. And again, I'm going in another stitch above that. So I go into the two legs above and the, of the, on the stitch above the V and underneath the V. And you could do this with pretty much any motif you want, as long as you work from bottom to top, left to right. Now, some people will work left to right and then go back and work left to right bottom to top but I like to work bottom to top and then from the left to the right. It can depend on the motif that you're doing. So again into the bottom of the V of the stitch that I want to cover then into the two legs of the V oh and make sure you're not catching your tails at the back either as well. Particularly your pink yarn, which you're going to want to have to pull out rather than cut out. Just so you can reuse it. And then I go into the top, the legs again of the stitch. And then I go back into where I came out of. And that is the first three stitches covered. And then I want to just continue on placing the rest of my motif. And that's it. I pop in my last stitch and then I'm ready to remove my tacking thread and you'll be able to see that your motif is now in your knitting exactly where you wanted it to be. Don't pull it out. Make sure you kind of use the short end and then pull it through. And there you have it. You have your duplicate stitch or Swiss darn motif in your pattern and you haven't had to do any fussing around or creating, you know, working back and forth or anything like that. So for small motifs on little sweaters or little pockets or anything like that, this is a really useful technique. One small point to mention actually on this is that not all yarn likes to be duplicate stitched. So something like a roving or a kind of a fluffy yarn you may only get one shot before it makes it very fluffy. So do think about that before you select this technique in all cases.